Problem 10.1-2. The bridge will be made from A36 steel members. Determine the minimum moment of inertia of the critical member with respect to buckling. Use a factor of safety against buckling of 1.5. Neglect yielding of the member. Here's the bridge. It is uh, simply supported with a pin and a roller. There are three point loads acting along the bottom. The dimensions are given. One of these members is going to be the critical member in terms of buckling. It means it will be the one that buckles first. We need to find it and find what the minimum moment of inertia will need to be for that member. The first thing I need to do is find the reaction forces at A and H. And because this is a symmetric bridge with symmetric loading, we know that the resultant forces will be equal at A and H. If we take the total load on the bridge, 60 kilonewtons, and split it in two ways, uh, each of the supports will take 30 kilonewtons. Now, this bridge is a truss. And for a truss, we can use the method of joints to find the axial forces in each of these truss members. Because it's symmetric, we only need to find the forces in uh, half of the members. And let's do that beginning with joint A. The point represents the connection at point A, and the arrows represent the members and their internal forces. So now we'll sum the forces in the y direction to solve for member AB, then sum for the forces in the x direction to get member AC. Summing forces in the y direction equal to zero, uh, we have a 30 kilonewton load pointing upward, and then we have a member AB pointing downward, though at an angle, and we can take advantage of uh, the geometry here. It says a base dimension 3, height 4. That means the length of member AB is 5, and so to get the vertical component, we take 4 fifths AB equal to 0. We solve AB is equal to 37.5 kilonewtons, and it's in compression, so I'll put uh, I'll note that with the letter C. And summing the forces in the x direction, we can solve for AC. That's equal to 22.5 kilonewtons, and it's in tension. Now let's move on to joint B. Now I've drawn joint B, and we have member AB is known. It's a compression uh, force, and we'll solve for BD by summing forces in the x direction, solve for BC by summing forces in the y direction. Summing forces in the x direction and y direction, we get values for BD and BC. And I'm going to continue this process for joints C and E, and thereby find axial forces in all members. Using method of joints at joint C, we can solve for members CD and CE. And finally, applying the method of joints to joint E, we can solve for member DE. We get that it is equal to 20 kilonewtons in tension. Now I've made a table of our internal forces and lengths for each of the members in our truss. We want to find which is the critical member in terms of buckling. Since the modulus of elasticity will be the same for all of our members, then we need to identify the critical member as being the member with the combination of largest force and greatest length. And it turns out for our truss, that members A, B, and F, H have both the largest internal force and the longest length. Let's look back at which members this is. That's this member here, member A, B, and member F, H. So those are going to be our critical members from a buckling perspective. So the problem asks us to find the required moment of inertia for this member, and we're going to use the Euler's buckling equation. And the problem statement also said to use a factor of safety of 1.5. So I'm going to take this force here, 37.5 kilonewtons, and I'm going to apply the factor of safety to it. I'm going to multiply it by a value of 1.5. We get a value of 56.25 kilonewtons. This is the value we'll use to evaluate Euler's buckling equation solving for moment of inertia. So here's Euler's buckling equation for members that are pin-connected. And in a truss, the members are all pin-connected. And I'm going to take it, and I'm going to rewrite it, solving for the moment of inertia. And this expression will give us our moment of inertia value. When we plug in 56.25 kilonewtons and a length of 5 meters, that will give us our minimum moment of inertia necessary for our critical member. 
And now plugging in our values for P critical, our length, and our modulus of elasticity for A36 steel, we get the following value for our minimum moment of inertia in meters to the fourth. Now multiplying that by a thousand to the fourth power will give us the value for moment of inertia in millimeters to the fourth. That's typically the unit for moment of inertia for uh, member sections in tables of, uh, of member properties if you're going to do the next step which would be to design the member for buckling. And we're done.